folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for taking the time to check out today's tips and tricks video. So folks, we're going to continue on with the layout tab. And uh, one of the things that I want to discuss is the spinner. And the spinner model that is right here um, is an awesome addition. But I don't know that people totally understand it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a couple things today. The other thing I want to bring out while I have this here is I want to use the create new download. So if you have purchased uh, a spinner, let's say from um, James over at Boscoyo Studios, which I have two of his spinners, actually two of them, three of them, I don't know. Um, but I have his spinners and I have them placed on my house. I'll go ahead and grab those. But I also made my own spinners. And let's see if I can find them. Here's under Boscoyo Studios spinners. Um, I'm pretty sure that they are the 22s. We'll just say that. It doesn't matter really. But we can insert the model. So, so you have a model here that you can follow. You can go in, right click, and look at the node layout and push your pixels out the way that they're supposed to be. You can, you know, you have you have functionalities that that are available uh, because the model is already preloaded into X lights. But there's also the model the spinner model itself where you can kind of customize it but you kind of can't so there's the difference between the spinner model and the custom model and that's kind of what I want to talk about today before that though this video is brought to you by the PPD sequence club when you join the PPD sequence club you get one sequence included with your monthly membership uh, price every month you also get four preset effects you get a uh, a pretty cool uh, pretty cool effects with the with the addition of the kaleidoscope and the warp effect to those as well really neat and then you also get access to the uh, monthly vendor specials page which uh, we have vendors who are uh, who range from of course boss Corio studios we have crock of fantasy lights wired watts pixel sequencing Scott LED and a ton more who on a monthly basis offer all of our members some great savings for all of their pixel builds or all their controller builds or their their display builds in general so save money with the pixel pro display sequence club so what I want to talk about now is I want to talk about a, a kind of an evolution and I'm gonna bring some videos up from uh, my past and what we're gonna sh what we're gonna see is three specific videos that over the years have happened to been a pretty big impact on me as far as also I think there is some congruence with what I'm about to show so you see this video here this is one of my original spinners this was used making LED strips or RGB pixel strips I love this spinner the challenge was though is that the spinner um, would I, I would have to replace legs on them like the strips would go bad and I'd have to replace them in the middle of the show and it was really annoying and uh, so but the way that I had built it in this video I'll probably link it in the video description on the website so you can view this as well uh, this is an older video from Holly to 2013 and uh, but I had to splice in I had to splice in a data cable to return the data back and go from the center back to the outside of the next leg and that's how the spinner model in X lights has been set up kind of with that start at one end work your way out to the other and then you have to splice in another wire and you start here and then move out that's how this spinner model is built but as time went on I kind of changed my model and I actually learned how to use a, 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 a drill press. I created my own jig and I drilled out my own holes for my own PVC legs and I was able to actually use bullet nodes. Now I'm telling you all this because this is the evolution. This is where it started. This is where it went to. But once again, I was faced with here here's the beginning of the string or here's the beginning of the string and then I'd have to go all the way in and then I'd have to make a jumper line to go from this data line out to this one here and go all the way in and then a jumper line from here all the way out to go in inwards and so it was it was the same kind of thing that you would see on this model where you started at one end you ended here then you had to jump the line over to here and this is where the custom side comes in is because in the third video that I'm going to show you, we 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 had the functionality of adding in sub models. So this is this is from 2017. This is a video that I did on how I created sub models for my spinner because I had reworked exactly how the layout was. 
Now, what ended up happening is this was my first pixel here, but then I skipped this pixel. I did a leapfrog, what I like to call it, and I did a one, two, three, four. Now, what, what happens is, is that I get all the way to the end, and then I leapfrog back with the empty spaces that I skipped, and I ended up with pixel number for me, pixel number 12, was here. So pixel 1, pixel 12. That meant pixel 13 was this first one. And I could jump right over here. No more splicing in those little leads on every single one of my spinners, which would create an extra amount of work. The challenge for me was building the model in x -Lite. So the original models, I'll show you, the original models, they worked perfectly with the spinner model that was available in x -Lites. The problem is, is my third iteration of the spinner with the leapfrog didn't work very well. So I had to create a specific model in x -Lites using the custom model sequence. Uh, but I wanted to share with you the thought process behind this. So if we look at the spinner model, we can see that the spinner model, if we right click and we look at the wiring view, we can see that it starts here at the very bottom tip and it goes in and then we have to have that splice in. So I've already explained that. But this is what's nice about the spinner model. If you follow this model, it works wonderfully. It does a fantastic job. It makes it easy to sequence. It really is a, a very easy prop to add in. Not only that, many of my spinners were only uh, were eight note or eight arms so if i put eight on here that is what my spinner kind of looked like now actually you could you could make some changes you could make it less hollow we could change that 20 to a zero and bam now it looks kind of a little bit more like what i actually had on my house so that makes a little bit more sense to me oh i had uh, let's do um let's do the number of lights i had 12 pixels so that was a little bigger so you can see how the how this would help you if you would start out here, move in here, and then you have to cut your split and put your split all the way back out here to run your data line out here and move back in. What's nice, though, is that we've learned, thanks to James over at Boscoyo Studios, we learned that we had to learn how to leapfrog pixels so that we didn't have to add in all that splicing, all that extra soldering, because that really did. That took me about an hour and a half to do all the soldering for all of those specific joints. But not only that, it also created a, a place or a point of weakness in the string where you possibly or potentially could have a failure in your solder joint and you may have to replace it or repair it. So now I, I never truly experienced that. I just had bad pixels uh, on the strips and that's why I switched to nodes. But in any event, this made it just a little bit harder to use this model whenever I started doing a more custom model with the leapfrog design. So uh, what, uh, what, what we can do is I can actually bring in from my, uh, well, at least I hope I can. Let's see if I can. Um, let's, let's bring in a custom model right here. This is create and import custom model. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to click and drag and I'm hoping, I'm praying that I actually did this before starting this recording. If I go into my X lights directory and I look for an X model that says spinner, I'm really hoping I have it. Spinner, spinner, spinner. Ah, look right there. Spinner. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Thank goodness. And now you're going to see this is this is how the x lights model is created versus how a custom model i had created so from this video this video here is the one where i actually was working within this model and this is that model from the video by the way so if we go in here and we click edit click to edit we can look and see exactly how the model is built we can see that i started here in the center i i didn't go right to the center but i had the next pixel out one, two, three, all the way out to six, and then backwards seven through 12. And that would be the easiest way that I could come up with to model my spinner and still be able to create the effects and so forth that I wanted. But now keep in mind, folks, the difference between this model here is that specifically, just like this one, where you, you actually see, you can actually go in and you can look at the, the model layout and so forth. You can actually see where all of those pixels end up. Here's the challenge. With this one, whenever you look at the node layout, 
you can see that the node layout looks more like a matrix. And if you see the first node, which would be this node right here at the bottom, the second node would be going clock, uh, counterclockwise in this instance, and they go up, they go to the center. So if you put an effect on this matrix, like a bars effect going up, the bars effect is gonna go up, and in other words, it's gonna start on the outside and work its way inside. Whereas if I use a bars effect on my model or on the uh, Boscoyo model, I'm going to see the bars effect start at the bottom and traverse all the way to the top of the model. Because in this version, Xlace doesn't realize that it's a 360 model. It realizes that this model is doing it as per preview of the node layout. Oops, excuse me of the node layout as a matrix. So the way that you sequence this model here is gonna be different than the way you sequence these two models here. So I just wanted to bring this to your attention. I know this is a little bit longer video than, than you might have expected, but there is a lot of interesting things and I wanted to bring this up to your attention so that you would actually have a chance to learn something that maybe you didn't know about x -Lights. And if you do have these spinners or if you'd like to make these spinners, I love mine and they'll, ne they'll always be in the display. They're super easy to deal with. Um, and I, you know, once I created the model, it, you know, it was so stupid easy to, to, to get it in there. And once you learn how to sequence it, once again, it's really easy to sequence so folks if you like this video make sure you hit the big like button down there is the red subscribe button also hit that as well as the bell for notifications on all videos that we put out also comments in the comment section if you have any questions or anything please leave those below usually that leads to another video that i like to make and uh, kind of make a better explanation for people who do, do have questions if you'd like to support us the best way to support us is through our pixel pro display sequence club membership if you like what we do and appreciate the fact that we put all this content out there then please support us by becoming a sequence club member for one month you you get that free sequence you get access to the vendor specials and you also get free presets so Again, folks, thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Down through the chimney with those and me. Sam, and every time it rains, it rains. And all the